Friction, we're here and we're very excited. Congratulations, your second studio album, After Dark. Bloody hell, how does it feel? Ooh. Oh, tell you what, that has taken a long time. That has taken a serious long time. But it's it's one of those projects that I kind of like made the sort of bad decision. or Well, it's a good decision, but a bad decision of creating the album where every single track had to be part of a theme basically mm. and um doing so just makes things a little bit harder you can't just make a banger and be like oh, i'm sticking that on there because unless it falls in line with the theme of the album you can't put it on there which is why it's taken so long basically but we're here and it's all good let's just go back really quickly just to get everyone up to speed because this is your second studio album connections in 2018 was your first one um which was home to some of the biggest tunes that we had on georgie fm and that was kind of like the start of sowing the seed of drum and bass on george i remember it was like a, yeah. a, it was like um my first year of being with the station and our biggest tunes were ultra funk uh dancing with jp cooper uh mad of the jungle forever dub stinker like all of those tunes were home like that was connections was that yeah. home you know so it's like that took apparently quite a long time to get there for the first one what's different for the second one like what ha have you learned from that first album like have you what is the difference between the first and the second album, in your opinion? I think that, like, with the first album, and that that is, like, an amazing kind of period as well for me because, like, New Zealand-related, that for me was like, you know, I always came out to New Zealand when I, when I was coming through as a DJ and, you know, you'd always do wicked tours and there were so many cool sort of clubs. But the clubs you'd play out, they'd be sort of smallish venues, really. And it was kind of from that period on, which would, would have been about four years ago, that I started coming out and I didn't even realise how the New Zealand scene had like exploded so much around. It was about four years ago where things went big, mm. you know, where it was just like the venue suddenly got a lot bigger <laughs> and the New Zealand scene exploded. And I remember that whole period of like ultra funk and dancing and like it was just a really lovely period to be in because you'd come out and it'd be like, whoa, they really know these tunes and these venues are bigger and it was just a massive kind of, I don't know, for me, it just went, when New Zealand scene really went super big. Yeah. I remember, like, listening to, I mean, even the George Resident DJs, um, the drum and bass ones, yeah. like, ultra funk, oh. er in everybody's set, mm. you know, doubled with something every single time. Yeah. Like, it was just the staple, yeah, the yeah. ultra funk. God. Tune. It's really funny because the ultra funk tune, like, I love making that tune with Metric, and... Um, when I was about two years ago, I was on a plane to Vegas and I had about an hour and I was like, right, I'm going to make a VIP of it. So I made this VIP and it wasn't even an hour. It was about half an hour on the plane. And it has been the most requested tune, like of anything that I do. I'll, I'll make a new single and it will come out and then people just go, where's the Ultrafunk VIP? And it's like, <laughs> oh my God, it's like half an hour's work. <laughs> so it's like, I've got to finish that off at some stage. I might do that now. I haven't got an album to write. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like, oh, Shit, well, that's the thing. I feel like you wear so many hats. You're a father, you're a partner, you're a label owner, you're a, you're a touring DJ, a producer. Like, there are so many hats that you have to kind of um, wear day to day. How do you do it? Like, Ed, that's, like, pretty crazy that you have to be all these people to so many people, you know? I think now the um, now the album's done, you know, and it's been, it's been a journey, do you know what I mean? And I've got... Uh, I've actually planned a trip to Ibiza with a load of mates in a couple of weeks. Blow out. So just kind of, uh, my manager's really happy about that, you know, <laughs> especially when I'm going to be promo in my album. But um, yeah, I'm going to have a bit of time with some mates and uh, have a good crack then. But it's just, I, I like being busy. I like kind of doing everything. And it's changed from when I first started because when I first started, I was a DJ and I did everything backwards in a way, whereas... A lot of guys that come through now produce and then they learn to DJ. And mm. I was a DJ that then learned to produce. So it's a bit of a mad way of doing it. But mm. um, I definitely, to answer the question, like when I did the first album, Connections, what I think I've learned in the studio so much more since then, which is why I wanted to test myself and have an album that was completely themed, which is themed around nighttime and mm. nighttime experiences. I'm waiting for Brooke to make a joke when I say that, but like nighttime <laughs> musical experiences and, um, you know, kind of like that whole thing was something I wanted to experiences that I've had musically and different emotions you can experience 
and listening to a DJ or a producer that you're absolutely amazed by. And yeah, that was kind of what this album is about, basically. Being DJ first and then producer, do you think that had, obviously it's got its advantages and disadvantages. Was there quite good advantages of being a DJ first and just instantly knowing how this will work in a mix? Yeah, if you're a producer first, you can produce an amazing track, but it just might not fit with like within the DJ realm and yeah. it just doesn't get the credit it deserves, but it's an amazing track kind of thing. Do you think yeah. it helped you a lot being being a DJ first? Yeah, hundred percent. Like I I think I look at making music in a different way. So sometimes what I might do is if I'm in the studio and I get some chords down and I like the sound of the chords, I will get a vocal from another track. Almost in the same way that a DJ will make a mashup and that will lead me to get the vibe to sort of develop a song so that's kind of like i kind of make tunes from a dj's point of view mm. because that's how i always started you know i've got no musical i didn't you know I, I played the drums for a bit when i was a kid but i'm not you know classically trained you know I, everything that i make i make because i sort of play it and if it sounds good it's like cool let's go with it who knows <laughs> if that's musically correct but let's just give it a whirl and see and that's kind of like the dj sort of you know i suppose attitude to things and that's how I've tried to develop and I've tried to sort of push my production over the years. And yeah, that's kind of, that's definitely, I think, I definitely think it's a different way. Yeah. Mm. Basically to, to most people's production. There's mm. probably like a good thing for a lot of people to hear who may be a DJ and is like, Oh, I didn't learn an instrument at school. I don't know how to read music. I'm not, you know, up to speed with all that and kind of have, have maybe not thought about jumping into it but now they're yeah. like oh you know what like if friction's doing it yeah. I'll do, i can do you know it what? <laughs> friction's doing it i'm getting in there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly i think that's a really good thing i think that actually because sometimes i'll sit in the studio and i'll do things and i'm like oh no i don't think that's right like i don't think i don't think that i should be doing this like this or this technique shouldn't be like this or and sometimes it's just like do you know what you know, F it, just, just crack on, just do it. And if you think it sounds all right, keep going. If you're mm. vibing, don't, you know, try not to think too much about what should be the right way of doing things. Making music, you should just go with whatever feels good and crack on because I'm, I second guess myself all the time. And sometimes I make the best music when I just think, no, no, keep going. Just don't, mm. the little demon on that shoulder is going, no, nah, you should do it like that. Just crack on and do it <laughs> yep. and forget about it. Well, we're here for an album walkthrough. Yeah. Very exciting. It is going to be the first time that you're going to hear this album. So we're feeling really, really stoked and honoured yes. to have this moment with you, Friction. Thank you so much for joining us on George Drive for this. We wanted to walk through just a couple of tunes. Let's kick it off with Into the Night. Polo and Bryson teaming up with Shells, uh, vocalist Shells. And the Don's Polo and Bryson. Yes. Um, beautiful, but a little bit dark. It's a bit liquidy. Brooke, you've written a note saying tugboat. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like, <laughs> I, I thought, you know, I was listening to it. I was like, oh, it's a bit of heavy liquid, but there's also like a cheeky, quite a mellow foghorn in there. And I was like, you know, like a little, yeah. like a little tugboat. <laughs> huh? I like that. It's like, um, it's like, um, it's an understated foghorn. Yeah. I like that's kind of like, it's like a little tugboat that's just basically saying, I've reached, I've done my journey for tonight and I'm finished now and I'm just letting you know I've done my work, but that's it from me. Do you know what I mean? It's like Brum, he's, <laughs> he's parking himself back up in the garage, he's like, oh, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, just a little toot toot to let you know my work is done here. <laughs> so let's talk about how you kind of, how this track came to be. Why Polo and Bryson and why Shell's the vocalist? I've known Harry Bryson, for, well, both Polo and Bryson for so long, but... Um, me and Harry had been talking for ages. Oh, we've got to make a tune together at some point because they've been signed to Shogun, my other label. And, you know, just so, so talented. And, um, yeah, we just started writing a little idea and I, I explained the concept of what I was doing to Harry. And um, he's one of those guys It's like, you know, I, I play chords and stuff for a lot of my tunes. But when you do a collab with certain people, you kind of are like, I'm staying away from the keys because you are sick. Oh, cool. So basically, I was kind of like talking to him about the kind of vibe that I wanted to get. And I was kind of like trying to go with like an old sort of faithless vibe on a couple of the tracks on this album, you know, trying to get a kind of like dark euphoria sort of going on. So, yeah, we started sitting there and he started playing some chords and um, I put some drums in and we kind of came up with this idea and 
I sent it to a vocalist called Shells, who has been on a lot of big house records. She's actually on Wilkinson's album as well recently. Mm -hmm. Her voice basically summed up what I wanted to the the album to be. And um, yeah, she wrote to two tunes. So she wrote to Into the Night and After Dark, um, which is the title track of the album, obviously. And um, yeah, we just kind of, we wanted to write a tune that was a collab of both our styles so that you could hear elements of Polar and Bryson. And it came out as a perfect collab. We kind of like, this is a real, this, this is both of us. It sounds like it. So yeah, it was cool. Beautiful. Would you like to introduce uh, introduce the track for us? We're going to play out this one right now in full first time. George Fardo, Ooh. let's go. This is me, Friction, and this is Into the Night by myself, Polar and Bryson and Shells. Cool. Take me into the night where I'm meant to be. was Euphoria with Emily Mackis, one of our favourite vocalists. Yeah. So pleased to get her on the album. It was kind of like, we've been working quite a bit with her and she's just such an incredible writer and singer. And um, we actually had like um, an Elevate writing camp. I hooked up with her and we started writing the tune. And um, yeah, I kind of, Euphoria, that was the, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of like a rave love song. Because yeah. it's like where you meet someone and, you know, if you listen to what she's to talking about, you know, it's meeting someone in a rave and having that instant connection. And yeah, basically one of those emotions that I was talking about as part of the whole After Dark thing, you know, it's all different emotions that you can experience, you know, at a club, at a festival. And yeah, I just, they, I've, I've spent a long time working on that tune because I wanted to get the mood right and I wanted to give it like an old school jungle feel to a certain degree. And, um, yeah, I had to keep listening to her voice. And with Emily Mackis, her voice is so amazing. Mm. I was getting emotional in the studio, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Because she's just got the most beautiful voice. So, yeah, I was, it's lucky I actually finished it in time because it took a long time to finish that tune. <laughs> Lots um, of crying. <laughs> as the name suggests, Euphoria, there's some pretty epic breakdowns throughout that track. Um, working on those, did you do you reckon you spent more time on the breakdowns and builds than the than like the the drop and the heavy sections of it yeah i think i probably did to be honest because it's a record like that is all about the kind of emotion and feel of it and um when you're working with a voice that's that sort of stunning you have to make sure that you're complementing it you know and doing it justice you know mm. because she's just got she's got an amazing voice man and that that kind of tune like you could i could just listen to her sing a cappella. to be honest mm. it's um yeah, it's 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 she's got a great voice and she's um she's writing some amazing tunes right now. So yeah, I was pleased to uh to get her on board. Well, I'm one of those gems in the scene. You yeah. know, you just stumble upon an absolute gem and you're just like, Wow, you've got a big career ahead of you. I'm so excited to watch what Emily Mackis does next. Um all right, George FM, let's go to our next tune and uh we're gonna revisit um the Shells. Shell we're gonna, Shells. We're gonna revisit the vocalist Shells once again, who is uh also on the track Into the Night. But this is After Dark, the title track of the album. Why this one? Why was this the title track of the album, After Dark? It's basically like what I was saying before. Before, that with this album I wanted a concept album I wanted something that sort of like made you kind of think about all the different emotions you have whilst going out etc etc and I wrote the chords for this tune and I had them there and I wanted to write chords that summed up the whole concept so everything that I wanted to write was this tune this is like the whole concept this is the album in one and um yeah, I had the chords and I did a session with her when I was working on the Poland Bryson collab with her. And then I played it. And then she was like, tell me the sort of, tell me the words that sum up your, you know, what you're feeling, what you want to do with this. So I started writing down words and basically send them to her. And she's like, can you give me like 20 minutes? Came back on the Zoom and she'd just written the idea. And I was like, I'm bloody lucky to be working with some seriously talented people because I was like, yeah, that's it, done. Okay, let's go. Let's write this and let's get it done. So, um, yeah, unbelievable, really. Just like a really good 
music experience working on this tune. Ed, have you ever got into chia seeds, chia brain boosts? No. What is what is that? What does it do? So chia seeds, like when you put them in water, they absorb all the water. But you can get these like little um, antioxidant <coughs> drinks. This one's like a brain superfood. It's pretty good and uh, makes you feel full because all these little little beady chia seeds that are they're like little tadpoles actually. Oh, so they all sw swell up inside your tummy. Basically. Yeah, well they're mainly sw already swole in here, but. <laughs> Um, yeah. it's, such, it's such an odd, it's such an odd thing to drink. Anyway, we ready, Sin? <laughs> yeah, and I'm so glad I got all of that on video. Weed and wine with a little sound. Uh, man, she's a, she's an absolute ripper, isn't she? Amazing. Another very, very talented person. Um, I actually wrote that tune up at Brad Ballou's studio in London. Brad Ballou's like worked with Wilkinson, Shy FX. He has worked with me, loads of drum and bass people. Uh, wrote that up there with a girl called Vem B, mm -hmm. um, who's doing really well in the UK at the moment, and Little Sound. It's basically um, when you take the party home. Yeah. I can't think of any other way of uh, when you take the rave home. That's how I put it. Nah, I love that little ode, an ode. I suppose to... that's what it is. You kind of hear it in the lyrics. Yeah, an ode to the kick-ons. <laughs> and it is quite like a smooth sounding, vibey little track. Like it just, it's, the sound is perfect. I think yeah. for what I would like at the afters, I, I think the breathers actually go home and listen to some real heavy shit at the yeah. afters. Yeah, yeah. But weed and wine is the perfect sound for an afters with myself. I feel. Well, you know, you're you're a civilized girl, sin. Do you know what I mean? So I could only imagine you oh. listening to something like this. Sometimes, <laughs> depending what hour of the night. <laughs> yeah, and I reckon you'd be quite impressed with me sometimes, mate. I could outdo Brooke sometimes. Nah, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Uh, a beautiful record. Okay, let's move forward. Um, we are really just we Brooke and I just we lost our absolute absolutely freaking marbles over this tune. We we literally could not stop talking about it in our DMs. We're like, holy hecka, Supersonic is gonna be massive. I can't really get my head around it, and the reason why I can't get my head around it is because I realised that I had to write one more track for the album, and basically. I wrote Supersonic in about a day and a half when I was getting screamed at by all sides. <laughs> basically like, deliver now. You're ruining it for everyone. <laughs> Give the album in. You've got to do another tune. So, um, rude. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, they are rude. I think people just, you know, I just don't feel appreciated, Brooke. You know what <laughs> no, I mean? But, yeah. Um... Hey, yeah, exactly, mate. And uh, who's picking, you know, how they're getting their paychecks? It's off of your bloody music, all right? So... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have words. You've made me, I feel I feel like I should deal with this. We now. Should, but, um... should we make a union? Yeah, we'll sort yeah. it. Definitely, I'm keen for that. Um, but yeah, so I had to write another track. And um, I've been listening to quite a lot of the new house records that are out there at the moment when you've kind of got, not sort of rapping over them, but kind of like repetitive kind of, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. rapping, it's not singing, it's something in the middle sort of thing. And I've listened to a lot of house tunes with that vibe. And um, I don't know if I'm meant to say who it is that's actually singing that or Go performing on. that. Go but on um, I'm going to. It's, uh, it's Poppy, Poppy Bascom. Oh. So she's just so talented. And I basically said to her, could you do something like this? And she's like, yeah, I can do anything. Oh, and um, Go Poppy! Yeah, she's so good, mate. So basically, she recorded the loop. And um, I was like, brilliant. Can you do it and send it to me right now? And she did it. And um, yeah, I rolled out the tune. And yeah, it's, it's mad. It's, I haven't made a tune like that before. It's kind of, yeah, I don't know what... Uh, I wasn't sure what people would make of it. So the fact that you guys like it, I'm definitely happy about that. You noted the vocals. And I, when I listened to it, I instantly felt this um sierra one two step of kind of flow and uh mixed with a bit yeah, of like yeah daft, there is a bit of that bit of daft punk technologic like the repeat of like the yeah. kind of words but it's man, almost it's like hypnotizing yeah and a little bit allure like it's just very like alluring is that the right word yeah. um but i can just yeah i feel like it sits nicely in this whole theme of the album as you know after dark in the rave the feelings that you get because 
you do when you're in the rave and you're in that space you get into a bit of a trance and that how it fe- that's how it feels to me i'm like oh mm. my god that song would just suck you up and you would just be in that song there's something about it if people do repetitiveness right it's amazing isn't it and mm. um yeah, just wanted to try something different and see if I could make it work in a sort of 174 BPM scenario. So, yeah, there it is. Belter, K Motions, Friction, that is called Electricity, and yes, very electric indeed. Taken from his album After Dark, we've got Ed Friction on the phone right now. Big chill. Back to back, big. Oh, thanks, guys. Working with, with K Motions, you both were in the country uh, dealing with a bit of a um, quarantine. Is that where that song started by chance it did actually you're bang on and um yeah i love k motions little tinker he's uh he's he's, uh, he's such a guy i like him a lot but he when we were here last time um yeah we were both in quarantine and he hadn't done the quarantine thing i don't think before whereas i'm an i'm a pro aren't i if he was hitting me up and he was like this is really boring man and i was like yeah it's really boring mate oh why don't we make a tune all right yeah let's make a tune so we started basically i sent him over some chords and a couple of little bits and pieces and yeah we basically made i was in um rotorua and he was in auckland and um we were sitting there in our little windows just sending tune ideas back to each other and um yeah electricity and then yeah i actually actually i played it at gold rush or golden rush or golden lights in yeah. auckland and it was literally like a loop that we just made over the internet and then i took it home and uh, got a vocal on it and um yeah it's been killing it to be honest like it's like a proper it's a breather breather tune isn't it yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> it definitely is i wouldn't expect anything less with a collab with k-motions he's and like from new zealand as well from new zealand you just that's exactly what it needed to be for sure we have heard this many times it's been a big tune on george fm we've uh experienced it live in the rave yeah but it's made its way onto the album good to me let's talk about this record good to me and your love were the sort of start of right i'm going to do this album and you know so it it was ages ago now because it was basically i wrote those tunes really shortly after connections and um yeah with all the sort of covid stuff lockdowns i just took ages to write this album so they feel like they came out ages ago but um good to me is one of my favorite tunes i've ever written and brooke when you were saying earlier about you know me being a dj has it changed my approach to making music this is like a perfect example of that doing so because it was a track that I had made and I couldn't find a vocal for. And I had the vocal, like a full vocal for a different song, completely different song, completely different key. And um, I actually just took a phrase from this other unfinished song that I had and um, the good to me bit, basically, and uh, pitched it down and it just worked as a vocal on the tune. And um, yeah, it's weird when you do things like that sometimes, rather than getting an actual vocalist to sing on the song, it just fit you know, perfectly and the song was born and yeah, it's one of my favourite tunes I've ever made, to be honest. And um, it just always has, there's a nice little moment with the crowd anytime I play this song. So yeah, I'm glad it's on the album and it kind of really feels at home on the album. on before about you know how your first album connections uh is home to so many big tunes that the george fm Fano absolutely adore and, and probably hold some really special memories from the rave and it's quite cool to think that this second album after dark is talking about the emotions and the feelings that you get at the rave and this is really the beginning and this is the start of it for years to come people are going to approach you ed and be like that tune means so much to me that encapsulates that moment that i had at the rave or that feeling i had at the after party so it's quite cool to know that this is the start of the beginning almost for you definitely like i think that's the beauty of 
writing an album is so so tough and like you know everyone's always like oh mate come on it's what you do it's what you do but it's like writing an album's tough but writing a kind of concept album it makes it tougher but when it all comes together at the end i've just i wouldn't have wanted to do it any other way to be honest and have something that hopefully that people listen to and it you know it goes with it reminds them of going out like you say and they have memories for it because at the end of the day that's what we make music for is to give people those memories which is what I've kind of used as inspiration to write this album. So, um, yeah, I'm really hoping it does do that and resonates with people for sure. You're going to be uh, creating some pretty big uh, memories at your, like, release, album release party. Brixton, October. Let's go. <laughs> Let's bloody go. Going out of my comfort zone a bit for that one and doing stuff that's not just normal DJ set stuff. So um, it's either going to go really well or go ho horribly wrong, so we'll see. But... Um, yeah, I'm lo looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to... I've got an Australia tour in October, America tour in November and December, and then late December, for coming to New Zealand, Ooh! and I hopefully don't have to quarantine. Yes! Mate, it's all been dropped. You'll just be coming straight off the plane <laughs> and straight to the pub. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and we've, we've been talking about it because uh, you're here for Christmas, is that right? I think I'm actually coming just after Christmas, oh, okay. but I am definitely here for New Year's Ooh. and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be in the same space as you guys on New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds bloody dangerous, but I'm so <laughs> keen to bring in the New Year with you, mate. Congratulations, Friction, on yeah. a second studio album. An absolute delight to have you on the show as always. Um, and, and what an album. Cannot wait for the world to hear it. Um, and good luck, and we'll see you very, very soon.